Hi everyone, Antoinette here. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to talk about six ways that you can demonstrate that you're truly listening to a person, that you are 100% present with them. The first way that you can demonstrate that you're truly wanting to listen to someone is by putting down whatever is in your hands. <laughs> For a lot of us, it's our cell phone. We're always holding our cell phone. For some of you, it may be a pen or paper or a fork or a child or a dog, but whatever it is, set it down. When somebody starts to talk to you, set down whatever is in your hand so that they will know that you're giving them your full attention. And that even goes for whatever you're touching. So say for instance, your hands are on your keyboard, remove your fingers from your keyboard, set down whatever you're touching, whatever you're holding. The second way that you wanna show that you're truly listening is not by looking over your shoulder like this. It appears that you're giving the person half of your attention because you're faced one way, but you're turning your head to listen to them. Now there is a caveat to this, and I'm gonna describe this in just a moment, but when you turn your body physically towards the other person, it shows that you're giving them your full attention. However, this is the caveat. There's been studies that have shown that men prefer talking side by side. So if a man is talking to you and he's side by side with you, then it's fine to turn your head and talk side by side. But women traditionally prefer that frontal facing communication. Patty Wood, who is a body language expert, describes this in her book, Snap. The third way you can show that you're truly listening is by being very intentional and removing whatever distractions that you have around you. Maybe it's that cell phone that you've put down that you can hear it vibrating. Maybe it's a smartwatch on your wrist anything that causes that slight, even millisecond break in concentration that you think isn't very noticeable, or maybe you think it's not noticeable to, at all, the other person detects it. And when that happens to me, when I'm talking to someone, I wonder, did they hear the last thing that I said? Did they get it? Either way, it's a little deflating because there's been that break in presence. Sometimes it's other people in the room. Sometimes it's a noise that happens that we can't control, that we break concentration from. Either way, whatever happens and you've broken just for a millisecond of concentration to look back at the other person and say, hey, would you tell me that again? Because I wanna make sure that I got that. That will give the other person permission to repeat what they've said and to feel like you're truly wanting to listen to them. The fourth way that you can show that you're truly listening is by practicing something called the two second rule. Olivia Fox Cobain in her book, The Charisma Myth, describes doing this and the powerful effects that it has on communication with others and how it helps to keep you really present in the conversation and the other person to feel heard. What this looks like is after someone finishes talking, you pause for two seconds before you reply or you begin speaking. It does a number of things. Number one, it helps the other person to realize that you've really listened to them. And secondly, it gives you a reprieve, not feeling like you have to think of the next thing that you're going to say in response to what they have said. It gives you a little bit more time for your brain then to think about what you're going to say. One of my clients describes that she has a friend that does this so well. She said, I feel totally listened to when I'm with her because after I've said something, she does that pause. And then it's as if what I've said, she absorbs it. It just washes over her face before she responds. She says, I feel so important and so valued whenever I'm talking to her. I have to tell you, not very many people do number five and number six, 
And oh my gosh, if you do these, they are really going to up your level in having the person that you're having a conversation with feel like you're totally present and interested in what they're saying. So let's get on to number five. Number five is to verbally acknowledge what the person has told you. So whatever it is that they've said, and you don't want to do this in every statement throughout the conversation, but for instance, if they told you how they feel about something or made a point or shared a story, to actually acknowledge what they've said before you move on to your story or your point. You can do this by asking them a follow-up question. You can do this by saying, oh my gosh, I can only imagine what that was like or how that felt. When you acknowledge what someone says, you're preventing yourself from going into what I call a comparison, which is a dangerous conversation trap. I've got a video above and also in the description below with a link to my video on this dangerous conversation trap that is so easy to fall into. The thing to remember is if somebody has told you something, then that means that they really wanted you to know it. And so if they want you to know it, the least that you can do is acknowledge it. And number six, and that is at the end of the conversation, to before you depart, to bring up something that they have told you earlier on in the conversation. It's going to cause them to walk away from the conversation feeling not only heard, but also valued. Do you have ways that you like to show that you're really present when another person is, is talking? If so, please share those in the comments below. I look forward to hearing from you.